Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is the part three of the adrenal gland pathology series. And in this session, let's learn about hyperaldosteronism. Primary hyperaldosteronism is also referred to as Con syndrome. Right? So that's my website where you can get the notes of all the sessions which I have covered in my YouTube channel. So in the next 15 minutes or so, let's understand what is aldosterone and the mechanism of action. And we will classify hyperaldosteronism into primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism. We look into various causes of these two entities. Then briefly about the morphology, clinical features, a bit about diagnosis and treatment of hyperaldosteronism. This is what we had studied in the earlier two sessions, right? We understood the histology of uh, adrenal gland. We looked into the layers of adrenal cortex and then the, you know, uh, steroid hormones synthesized from each of these. And we discussed about Cushing syndrome in the last session, right? So in this session, let's learn about hyperfunction of zona glomerulosa, that is hyperaldosteronism. First of all, let us understand what aldosterone is. Right? Aldosterone is basically a steroid hormone which is responsible for the electrolyte and fluid balance in the body. Right? When, I, when we say electrolyte, it means we are lo we're looking at sodium, chloride and potassium levels in our body. Now, how does, how does it happen? It's, it basically happens by increasing in the absorption of the sodium. It can take place in the distal tubules of the kidney. It can take place in gastrointestinal mucosa and in salivary glands. Predominant place where the sodium absorption takes place is in the distal tubules of the kidney and also by increasing in the secretion of potassium from the kidneys. This is how the electrolyte and fluid balance in the body is maintained. Now, let us look into the regulation of aldosterone synthesis. It is regulated by two important uh, systems. One is renin-angiotensin system. Another one is hyperkalemia. Right? So, renin-angiotensin system is also referred to as renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. So, what is this renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system? So, let us consider a scenario where the person is having a very low blood pressure. So, what happens when there is a low blood pressure? We know that there are juxtaglomerular cells. I am sure you would have uh, learnt about this in your histology classes. These are the cells adjacent to the glomerular. So, that's the afferent vessel. This is the efferent vessel. Right? So, the juxtaglomerular cells lies there. They have mechanoreceptors. Okay? Along with these mechanoreceptors and the macular densa cells, within the distal convoluted tubule, what they happen, you know, they sense that the pressure in the vessels is less and then they stimulate these JG cells to produce a secrete renin. Now, what does this renin do? We know that uh, angiotensinogen is produced by the liver and this renin which is secreted because of the low blood pressure, it acts on angiotensinogen to form angiotensin 1. Right? And this angiotensin 1 goes through a systemic circulation, particularly in the lung, what really happens is that it is converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, This happens in the lung. This angiotensin 2, it has two actions. One, it can directly cause vasoconstriction. Two, it stimulates the adrenal zona glomerulosa cells. Okay. So, it stimulates the adrenal gland, particularly the first layer, that is the zona glomerulosa, to produce aldosterone. So, that's how aldosterone is synthesized whenever there is low blood pressure through this renin angiotensin aldosterone system. I told there is another uh, regulator which is called as increased potassium levels, it is hyperkalemia. What does that do? That directly, you know, they, the, the, the increased potassium levels directly stimulates the adrenal zona glomerulosa cells to, to synthesize aldosterone. Now, what will this aldosterone do? Results in action on the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts. It increases the reabsorption of sodium and along with sodium, there is also increase in the reabsorption of water and that results in normalization of the blood pressure. 
along with that it also you know even vasoconstriction also increase i mean results in normal blood pressure so your blood pressure is tracked by increasing the reabsorption of water and sodium now it can also result in excretion of potassium ions so lots of potassium ions are being excreted thereby this increased potassium levels can be occurred right so apart from these two actions it can also result in excretion of hydrogen ions from the collecting ducts so this is in brief about the regulation of aldosterone synthesis so let's let's look into this particular illustration now we know that there is aldosterone synthesized due to various actions one could be low blood pressure another could be hyperkalemia so imagine a condition where there is increased aldosterone synthesis so when you have enormous amount of aldosterone being synthesized and that condition is what is called as hyperaldosteronism now what can happen it can result in very much increase in reabsorption of sodium and water and that will lead to hypertension right second important one it can result in increased excretion of potassium ions so more and more potassium is being lost from the body resulting in hypokalemia the third important one is increased excretion of hydrogen ions hydrogen ions is being excreted more for the exchange of bicarbonate ions so more and more bicarbonate ions in the system in the body resulting in metabolic alkalosis so whenever you have conditions of hyperaldosteronism okay you can expect you should expect hypertension hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis right so now let us look into what causes hyperaldosteronism right so hyperaldosteronism meaning chronic excess production of aldosterone so let's look into the causes of hyperaldosteronism it can broadly be categorized into primary and secondary causes so primary meaning autonomous overproduction of aldosterone whereas secondary mean it is secondary to the activation of renin angiotensin system among the two primary and secondary primary is more common when i say primary which means autonomous overproduction of aldosterone so that means the adrenal zona glomerulosa cells are producing more and more aldosterone without the help of this renin without the help of renin angiotensin system right that means to say that there is suppression of renin angiotensin aldosterone system there is decreased plasma renin levels right and also you have the features of hyperaldosteronism that is hypertension hypokalemia etc so when we move on to secondary causes when i say secondary is secondary means secondary to activation of renin angiotensin system right so that means what will happen to the plasma renin levels plasma renin levels will be significantly increased so remember always when you say primary the plasma renin levels are decreased in secondary hyperaldosteronism there will be increased plasma renin levels now let us see the causes of primary hyperaldosteronism okay so three important causes one is bilateral idiopathic hyperaldosteronism second one is because of adrenocortical neoplasm the third one is familial causes 60% is by the bilateral idiopathic hyperaldosteronism but uh, adrenocortical neoplasms constitutes around 35% of the causes and the remaining 5% is by the familial causes so i at this point i have to tell about the contribution by dr jerome w con uh, was an american endocrinologist way back in 1955 he saw a patient who presented with muscle weakness paralysis and very high blood pressure and then he also found out that this was due to adenocortical adenoma secreting more and more aldosterone and he attributed the clinical features that is hypertension the features of hypokalemia in the form of muscle weakness paralysis is by increased levels of aldosterone particularly produced by adenocortical adenoma and then later on you know this particular syndrome is named as con syndrome so con syndrome originally meant for all aldosterone producing adenomas but then now all causes of primary hyperaldosteronism is called as con syndrome so, so let us see what is this bilateral idiopathic uh, hyperaldosteronism means which means there is bilateral nodular hyperplasia of the zona glomerulosa cells it is also found that there is a mutation in one particular gene called kcjn5 gene and these are the individuals who are older 
they have less hypertension as compared to that of other causes of primary hyperaldosteronism. We look into adenocortical neoplasms. It can be adenocortical adenoma or adenocortical carcinoma. Carcinoma is extremely rare cause of you know hyperaldosteronism. It's more often because of adenocortical adenoma. Okay. Now there are. I mean, it is found that in uh, most cases of adenocortical adenomas, there will be mutations in any one of these genes. KCJN5 gene, CACNA1H gene, and ATP1A1 gene. Okay, let us see what are these. Consider this is a cell of zona glomerulosa, and there is a channel. This is called as GAIRK4, which is a potassium ion channel protein. And the KCJN5 KCJ is a gene which encodes this potassium ion channel protein. So, whenever there is a mutation of this particular gene, what happens? That leads to loss of selectivity of the potassium ion channel to the potassium proteins. When that happens, there is increasing increase in the influx of sodium. There is a change in the membrane potential which also leads to calcium dependent activation of aldosterone synthase. Okay, so mutations of KCJN5 resulting in the calcium dependent activation of aldosterone synthase leading to increased aldosterone synthesis. Now you got the point. Mutations in KCJN5 resulting in autonomous synthesis of aldosterone. Let us look into other two genes CAC1AH, which encodes calcium channel, another one encodes sodium potassium exchanging ATPase. So, mutations in both these genes or any one of these genes results in the cell being in constant state of depolarization. Okay, So, the cell is in constant state of depolarization and that leads to autonomous aldosterone synthesis. So, that's about the mutations of various genes involved in adenocortical adenoma. Now, moving on to the familial causes, which constitutes a lesser amount, number of you know, cases of primary aldosteronism. There are three different types of familial hyperaldosteronism, type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 is basically by formation of a chimeric gene. When I say chimeric gene, it means there is a combination of two genes. So, such chimeric gene, you know, makes the adenocorticotrophic hormone to stimulate aldosterone synthase. So, normally it is not the function of ACTH to stimulate aldosterone, aldosterone synthase. It is basically by controlled by RAs, right? So, in this case, because of this chimeric gene, this ACTH is also made to stimulate the aldosterone synthase, thereby leading to aldosterone production. Okay, renin, it is not the renin angiotensin system. Remember, it is because of ACTH which can cause aldosterone production. And because ACTH is involved in aldosterone production, this can be suppressed by dexamethasone, which is a glucocorticoid. And that is why this type of hyperaldosteronism is also referred to as glucocorticoid remediable hyperaldosteronism. What really happens is in these cases, you know, when you treat the patients with glucocorticoids, glucocorticoids, when you give glucocorticoids, ACTH production is decreased, right? And there will be no ACTH which can stimulate aldosterone synthesis and thereby aldosterone production can be controlled. So that's why it is referred to as glucocorticoid remediable hyperaldosteronism. Type 2, the mechanisms are unclear, but it is often found that it resembles that of hyperplasia or adenoma. Whereas type 3, again, there is mutation of KCJN. 5 which we saw earlier. So, that is about primary hyperaldosteronism. Moving on to secondary hyperaldosteronism which we all know that it is because of activation of renin angiotensin system. Now, let us look into the causes for that. So, there is increased plasma renin. We need to know the cause for increased plasma renin and that is because 1 because of decreased renal perfusion and that decreased renal perfusion is due to either due to renal artery stenosis or due to renal arteriolar nephrosclerosis. Both these entities can result in decreased renal perfusion. Second cause is arteriolar hypovolemia and edema and the most common causes for that is congestive cardiac failure and nephrotic syndrome. Third one is pregnancy. The pregnancy, you know, they, it can result in estrogen induced increased plasma renin substrate. All these three leading to increased plasma renin, right? And 
subsequently there will be activation of renin angiotensin system leading on to increased aldosterone synthesis so that's the mechanism of secondary hyperaldosteronism so this is just a summary of whatever we have learned so far causes can be categorized into primary and secondary primary being more common primary you have it can be because of bilateral idiopathic it can be because of neoplasms and can also be due to familial whereas secondary is always because of activation of renin angiotensin system due to various causes listed here right so that's about the causes of hyperaldosteronism now let, let, let's see the morphology of hyperaldosteronism the morphology uh, depends upon the cause again it depends upon whether we are dealing with aldosterone producing adenomas or whether we are dealing with bilateral idiopathic hyperaldosteronism in the case of aldosterone producing adenomas these adenomas are you know they are solitary they are very well circumscribed they are very very tiny less than 2 mm for some strange reasons left adrenal gland is more commonly associated with you know these kind of adenomas remember the zona glomerulosa layer is very very thin as compared to that of the zona fasciculata adenosterone producing adenomas obviously has to be very very small because they are tumors of the cells of zona glomerulosa that's why these are very tiny tumors so you cannot make a mass like lesion in the adrenal gland there there is no visible mass on the cut section you can see that there is a very bright yellow spot on cut section cells resemble that of zona fasciculata because they are strongly lipid laden though they are zona glomerulosa cell because of lipid rich cytoplasm they resemble that of cells of zona fasciculata most of these hyperaldosteronism are treated with pyranolactone in these cases you can see lots of eosinophilic laminated cytoplasmic inclusions okay that's the cell of zona glomerulosa you can see these eosinophilic laminated cytoplasmic inclusions and these are called as spironolactone bodies very characteristic finding found in these cases adenocortical aldosterone producing adenomas they are raised from smooth endoplasmic reticulum and they contain bound aldosterone whereas in case of bilateral idiopathic hyperaldosteronism you find diffuse and focal hyperplasia of the cells of the zona glomerulosa very very subtle enlargement you cannot see a very huge adrenal gland in these cases subtle enlargement you know resulting in hyperaldosteronism that's about the morphology how do these patients present i'm sure you would have known by now you have three important features right hypertension hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis can be seen in you know rare cases the, this is the most common cause of secondary hypertension right when i say secondary hypertension hypertension primary hypertension essential hypertension does not have any cause whereas hypertension secondary to an underlying cause is known as secondary hypertension and primary hyperaldosteronism is the most common cause we need to understand the long term effects there will be cardiovascular compromise and that's because of hypertension leading on to left ventricular hypertrophy and reduced diastolic volumes subsequently these patients will be having increased risk of stroke and myocardial infarction hypokalemia is another complication where you find hypertension and hypokalemia suspect you might be dealing with the case of hyperaldosteronism that is the reason why you get these you no know, electrolyte investigations in all cases of hypertension so hypokalemia how do you identify hypokalemia these patients will have neuromuscular manifestations in the form of weakness paresthesias visual disturbances and occasionally you can even find frank tetany but uh, hypokalemia is not always seen in all the patients how do you diagnose do a screening test you actually measure the ratio of plasma aldosterone concentration to plasma renin activity so if the plasma aldosterone concentration is more and the renin activity is less so what is the cause yes it is primary hyperaldosteronism okay but then you can confirm that it is not because of any other cause it is purely due to primary cause by doing an aldosterone suppression test and then you confirm that it is primary now you know that if there is increase in both aldosterone as well as plasma renin activity it has to be secondary hyperaldosteronism right so how do you treat these patients depending upon whether you are dealing with a primary or secondary cases of hyperaldosteronism if it is primary you know that there are two entities most important two entities one is adenomas another is bilateral hyperplasias adenomas knock off the tumor though it is very small if it is possible just try to knock off the tumor your uh, um, you know uh, aldosterone hyperaldosteronism is controlled 
hypertension is controlled if it is bilateral hyperplasia surgery cannot be the you know treatment of choice obviously you have to treat in by medical uh, management by using aldosterone antagonist particularly spironolactone and in these cases you see those spironolactone bodies secondary causes you have to correct the underlying cause of you know hyperactivity of renin angiogenesis system it could be congestive cardiac failure it could be nephrotic syndrome or it could be you know any causes for decreased low blood pressure blood pressure right so treat the underlying cause and your aldosteronism is managed so that's all about uh, today's session if you feel this topic was kind of difficult to understand i would suggest you to you know listen to this by reducing the speed of the video so that you understand the concepts very well once you understand the concepts very well hyperaldosteronism is a cakewalk absolutely thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button don't forget to comment whatever the comment it may be you know if you if you are happy about this video if you feel there are some flaws in this video please do comment if you are new to this video and you found this video useful do subscribe for some more contents and then please do share if you find this video useful thank you